each of them and go deeper down. So seeing. Again, unbounded by what we already know. But sometimes we are limited by whatever aperture we have today. So the thing I want you to do is really get clear about what is the aperture you're using today to look at a situation and how can you broaden it. And how can you really start to ask questions that help you reach outside your own data set? And each of us have one. If you don't acknowledge that, then you're not going to be a great leader. So broaden what it is you know, see what is today, see it for what it is. Here's another thing, executives love to believe their organization is good at everything because that shows that they believe in the company. But that's like saying your child is perfect or that you are perfect. And there's a humanity in the situation for people that says we're not good at everything. Well, a company can't be good at everything. So to really figure out what is it we're exceptionally good at, and then to figure out where our weakness is, so we can figure out how to go forward. If you don't recognize the sort of current state, you can't figure out how to go towards a future state because you're not going to fix the thing you need to fix. Is my point? And I want you to get to the point where you seek to know more. Just ask a ton of questions. Every meeting you go to, you should ask at least three questions. If you have it, if you're spending your time asserting your point of view without asking questions, I don't think you're doing good discovery. Three questions. Tell me more. Give me some hints. Tell me more. Why do you believe that? Just be careful about the word why, because sometimes that can be threatening to people. But, you know, help me understand why you believe that. And here's a good one that's a universal. What do I not know that I need to know to make this decision? What do I not know that I need to know? So tomorrow, if you go back into your staff or your boss's office, whichever way you want to go in, or Monday, hopefully you're not working on Sunday, ask that, what do I need, you know, the next big decision you're trying to make, what do I need to know about this? Guaranteed you're going to learn something in that process, and learning is always a good thing. If nothing else, you're going to learn their point of view. Right? And you're going to be able to handle naysayers better. But in the best case, you're going to see something you didn't know. And therefore, you're going to know how to lead differently. Risking. If I was to cut off your olfactory towers and bring in an elephant in the middle of this room, and I ask the people way in the back to describe the elephant and the people in the front to describe them from the side, and I just ask you to use adjectives. Do you realize that we all use different adjectives? Hairy, smooth, okay. Tusk is going to feel different than the tail. Toes are going to feel different than the body. And yet you're all looking at the same thing, right? Or you're feeling the same thing. That's what complex organizational problems are like. Every person in the business sees one angle at it, not the whole angle at it. And so when we're trying to solve more complex problems, we need to actually figure out what is the real thing we're looking at. And then organizationally, don't hide those elephants. Right? We tend to be the people, oh, elephant. <laughs> and uh, there's, there's one company I know that has absolutely done this terrible job with their customers. I mean, terrible job. They had a product for about three years that, that sucked. There's no other way to say it. It sucked. And there's not a person in the market who didn't know that. It was one of those things that everybody just complained about. Oh, it just sucks. Because it was really bloated. And they fixed those problems, but they never went back and told the consumers, oh, we realized we sucked. There's a whole legacy of customers that are sitting there still having this remnant point of view. And the GM doesn't want to do it because they don't want to do sort of the mea culpa thing. And I'm like, yeah, but you're kind of forgetting that 50% of the audience now thinks you suck. And so if you don't recognize something for what it is, you also can't move forward. And I think a lot of organizations and leaders have a hard time doing that. Right? They don't want to say out loud, we didn't do that well. Because they think their competitors will pounce on them and stuff. And I'm like, but the reality is the market already knows. Every employee in the company knows that if you don't actually acknowledge that you're not good at something, you're not being truthful. So risk is about taking risks in the big sense of making decisions, but it's also about being clear about things as they are. On a personal level, I think we need to learn how to forgive other people. We sometimes hold 
people accountable for a decision they made three years ago. And we work with them and, you know, oh God, they made that terrible decision. And then their political pot inside the company goes down. I think each person in the company has something to value, you know, of value to offer. I think we just learn, we need to learn the humanity of business decisions. People are part of this. And if we can't teach them that failure is okay and learning is good, then we're not going to enable them. I started to say earlier that the, my, my fundamental belief is that it's people that drive good strategy, it's people that drive innovation. Let me say it slightly differently. I don't believe it's about the chiefs. I believe it's about the tribe. Decisions no longer can happen in that flat world all the way from the top down, right? No one really thinks about three-year strategy plans as being valid. Those are just binders collecting dust. Real strategy is happening on a daily basis. The real strategy is being driven by people like you. And we're going to make mistakes, and that means we ought to be able to say, I made that mistake. So here's something to learn that you need to use next Monday. I'm sorry. <coughs> I think that's a perfectly valid term to bring into business. I'm sorry. Here's another one. I don't know. I don't know. And so when we bring that humanity and say, I don't know, or I'm sorry I made that mistake, you're going to earn personal credibility inside the organization. And then that organization that learns how to make that a norm will take greater risks and succeed. Listening. So here's the way most people listen. Sometimes we listen for points of fact. Some of you are just sitting there saying, she's giving a lot of opinion, but she's not giving fact. Some people listen to justify themselves. Ooh, I agree with that opinion. That makes her smart. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are listening for, do I already know this or not? Some people are listening for, do I look good at work? Do I do this? Oh, that would make me look good. Some people are listening with judgment. Is it right or is it wrong? And whatever it is, that whatever the form of listening is that you're doing today, you have some dominant forms. Here's a, here's a dominant just writing over there. Sometimes people don't like to be dominated. They don't want anybody to have an upper position with them. That's usually a family of origin issue. If you listen really hard to people inside business, they will never give someone an upper hand. That's that, that's that way of listening. And they're listening for that. If I give you this, are you going to have the upper hand over me? So I'm going to recommend that you actually, first of all, learn what it is that you're listening with. I have a whole list. I've only given you a couple. But we need to learn how to listen differently to be a generative listener. So that's my vocabulary. Generative listener. How do you listen in such a way that you park your ego somewhere else and you actually figure out how to create possibilities with people? Tell me more. What about that? And so, when you do that, when you are listening for what are they, what is their point of view, and what is it they're bringing to the table, why are they doing this, then you're going to be able to work with them in a different way. Listening is the most powerful tool you can use in business. Most people think it's about being really articulate. The most powerful person in the room is the one who's listening really well. Because you now know how to navigate the organization. You now know how to go and lean change. Because they've actually just told you everything they need to hear in order to drive that change through them. Right? Finance will tell you what they need. Marketing will tell you what they need. Operations and the silos of the business actually want to tell you. They'll tell you their personal bias of what their criteria is to sign off on something, and they'll tell you their organizational bias. But you've got to listen. And usually we walk in, how do we normally walk in, especially if it's something brand new? Guns are loaded, right? Let me prove to them that my point of view is right. What if your point of view isn't right, but you've done the 80% part? Then you say, how could we make it work? What would we need to do? Those are open conversations. 